name is Mike Honeyman. I'm the regional manager of the Arctic Arrow Powerline Group in Cranbrook, British Columbia. I started with Aero installations in February of 2006 as an engineering technician. And in 2008, I was offered the opportunity to buy into the company. And uh, my wife and I chose to do that. At that time, we bought basically one ninth of the company. We came into it thinking not a lot of people would have this opportunity at this stage in their lives to, to get into something like this. When we bought in, uh, the company was growing and uh, you know we were very excited for the future. Things just divvied themselves out based on what needed to be done. I took on that role of developing the occupational health and safety program for our company. I was actually pretty excited uh, about doing that. I spent a lot of time at it. I added all kinds of awesome pictures, used nice fonts and different colors and made this nice title page and signed it off. I felt very proud of that. I'd been an owner at Arrow for just over a year and Mike Roussel was a sub foreman. I didn't actually know him very well. He was, you know, one of the guys, a relatively new employee and there was a lot of them. He was working on a high voltage line, had climbed up a pole when he was electrocuted. There was 14,000 volts in that line and he was encompassed with a ball of flames. Um, it, the electrical arc lasted for, for quite a while until it broke and he fell away backwards, unconscious, up on the pole. He was rescued by the apprentice he was with and the hydro crews that showed up, flown to Calgary, taken to the hospital. There was a long period of time again where you didn't know if he was going to live or die. I can't imagine what his family was going through at that time. It was awful, really awful. And it was scary. Coming in in the morning and gathering everybody around, you know, and people are wondering, well, is he, is he going to be all right? Is he conscious? What? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. And, you know, they did their best to to do what they could, but as a result of the injuries he sustained, he lost his arm and his leg. When something this severe happens, you know, the investigation is, is right now. So you have people coming in. WCB, you've got the investigator, and you've got, there was a ex-RCMP guy that was, was part of that. And that's stressful. It's a tough thing to be sitting in the middle of and you're getting asked a lot of questions that you don't have a very good answer for. Everything about your company is exposed and vulnerable. And it doesn't matter how much good stuff you did. It's the things you didn't do good that are, they come to the forefront and they come quick. And that hurts, especially, you know, when you're proud of something and you don't really think that you did a bad job. Then this happens and then you realize like, yeah, I actually did do a bad job. And now it's out there for, everybody to see and you got a family that's just devastated their lives are changed forever you got a company that's in jeopardy of losing everything and it was tough to maintain like a cohesive unit as an ownership group when that was happening because you still have to make sure that the business is running as, as best as it can you got to take care of the people you got to deal with community, all the stuff that comes with that. I'd get phone calls from people while I was at work, even while I was at home. You know, I'd run into people that I hadn't seen in a while and they'd be like, what went wrong with your company that you guys became this, where, you know, you got a guy that's life has changed forever, you just, you don't care about the people is basically the message I got. Your business is in jeopardy when something like this happens and how you react to that is going to kind of define who you are as a person and you gotta just realize like okay this is either an opportunity for us to like fail miserably as a business or we can just accept what this is and try and work through it and try and come out somehow on the other end and see where we end up as far as the occupational health and safety program went and that was a big submission with the investigation and what I learned from that was I actually did do a good job on covering off the legislation required. All the, everything that was in there, in that book, was in there. The book was good, but what I learned was that it doesn't matter what you have 
written down in a book, if that doesn't translate into something real with the people that you are responsible for as a business owner, it means nothing. It's about connecting with people and really showing them that you, when you're talking about safety, you mean it. And what you mean is that you actually want them to be safe and you want them to feel comfortable that they can make calls that, hey, something's going sideways here, let's shut her down for the day. Oh, this isn't working right, well, let's go get it fixed before we try it. I honestly think if maybe I had approached it differently when I had the chance to, maybe it could have made a difference. I didn't do that, and huge hard lesson to learn. It wasn't long after Mike's accident that he was back at the shop here, and right away he said, I want to come back to work. And from you know 2009 when the accident happened to now, he's a foreman, power line technician with us, but he also has a lot of other roles. He's our A-ticket guy with the safety authority, he deals with scheduling, estimating. He's doing really well. He's a huge part of the success of the company, and uh, I'm happy to have him here. If I was talking to a business owner that was in my shoes, the one thing I would say is go and grab your people and sit down and talk to them about safety. Let them know that that really is something you care about, that you want to make a difference and you want to do what you can to be part of them coming home safer every day. I was holed up in an office for a year and a half writing a book that did nothing for anybody. It was a mistake. Don't make that mistake. Go do what you can now and uh, hopefully you don't have to learn things the hard way.